here is a real rarity. This is an 1881 patented Edison Dynamo. Now this thing can work as a direct current generator in the case that you put a pulley on the end and power it, or it'll work as a direct current motor. If you plug a battery into it, it'll, it'll spin. Um, it's a miraculously complete unit. You can see all the original rope wrapping is still here and in good shape. All the wires are in reasonably good shape with their um, woven wraps still in place and the little coils and everything. Um, ultimately, it just has a little bit of filth on it, but other than that, it's almost as would have come out of the factory. The entire base is cast brass or bronze. This is a Canadian General Electric version of the Edison Dynamo made in Peterborough, Ontario. This one is a type double zero and uh, it uses 110 volts DC. So this comes right out of the era of the current wars between Westinghouse and Tesla and alternating current and Edison and direct current. Real early, this leads me to believe it would have been originally powered by steam or possibly water turbines. It's the only thing that it's really missing is the oil caps on this bearing. You can see they're still in place here. Just these little caps with chains gone from this site on one square bolt. Other than that, it, it's pretty well a complete unit. And I think all that I'll do to it is give it an overall cleaning and inspection to make sure that it can be used. And then I'll fire it up with a battery or maybe a, um, an adjustable voltage machine and uh, we'll see what happens. So I've decided I'm not going to do a full restoration on this thing. I, it, it's in such a nice shape as it is. The patina is so lovely. I'm going to effectively keep it how it is aside from cleaning it. Like there's sawdust from the shop it was sitting in. There's, you can see corrosion on the um, copper alloy base. And uh, there's no reason to keep that around. So I'll clean that all off, but I'm not gonna polish it because it wouldn't have come from the factory that way. Uh, I appreciate a couple of people have reached out to me for with some info. Um, they said that these were cast in this size range. The bottoms were made of cast uh, brass or bronze from the 0.25 to 0.75 kilowatt range. And this double zero model is apparently a uh, 0.5, so a half kilowatt model. Um, other than that, there's not much information available on this uh, Canadian dynamo. Um, mechanically speaking, everything's free, like the, the lever that with the brush holder, it is not seized. The center spins just fine although the brushes don't engage fully because there's so much kind of old oil and dust in there there's about a sixteenth of an inch end play and if i hold it down there's barely any uh radial wear of the bearings there is some that i can feel so i figure might as well open it up and inspect the bearings i'm just going to use a Kind of be very gentle don't want to wreck anything or mar things the least i can so we'll pop this cap and see what's up and the rest of the surface i'm just going to hit with extremely fine steel wool and um, possibly a bit of oil in some cases look at this really early handmade square bolt that was pretty loose Oh. oh, gee whiz, that one's broken, but it's been broken for a long, long, long time. Oof. Okay, this is interesting. So we have some Babbitt inside this top shell. And then there seems to be like a insert bronze or brass bearing, and then you can see the little rings that are Exactly the same technology used in line shaft hangers for self-oiling. I might have to pop this whole bottom bracket off and pull this out the back. Um, hmm. I can see some shim stock in here as well, so it's definitely been serviced. The story of this motor is, uh, or dynamo, it, it came from the Roosevelt Bridge 
uh, New York Central Railway aspect, which was the old, old bridge in Cornwall, Ontario. It crossed from the U.S. into Canada, and there was a New York Central line that ran on this bridge, as well as automotive traffic. And when it was being demolished, uh, I'd imagine that would be around the time of the St. Lawrence Seaway project, this motor was in the old switch house for the railroad aspect and it was being demolished and the the brother of the fellow that i bought this from uh saved it from the demolition uh, of the building so that's where it came from and ever since he's been hanging on to it and he kept it in lovely condition the only thing that scares me is he said when he was a young fella they plugged it into the wall not knowing this is a direct current machine and it does say 110 volts, so I assume they just... And he said it made some noise, and then they just stopped. So hopefully that didn't fry anything. We'll see. Often that's how these things are. You, I'm glad that I heard most of its story, because most of the time you find these things, and there's no information at all on their history. So at least I have that. This... Oh, oh. If I lift that... Interesting. Seems to be one machined piece, this funky piece of brass. And so it does look like I will have to take this bottom off to, uh, to get at it. So let's see. I'm not sure what these little pins are. Maybe they're uh, height, height adjustments. We'll, we'll see if it's uh, seized or not. No, no. That's what's so nice about working with brass and uh this is probably wrought iron hardware is you often don't have much of a difficulty if any in getting it out oh and this side the bolt is already kind of out not sure if that's a good sign or not okay Oof, looks like some rust. Maybe there's a steel nut in the bottom. Also, I'll mention that I don't have the subframe for this motor. Originally, this would have would have had a kind of a containing unit with set screws on these little pad parts here. And that way you could adjust it uh, in line or tweak it a little bit um, for pulley and belt alignment. So, uh, I haven't looked underneath it, but maybe there's some old remnants under there it probably would have been on top of a cement or brickwork pedestal so okay so it just took me five seconds once i turned the camera off and this other pin was loose i just very gently went back and forth and it turns out that it's a taper pin which leads leads me to believe that it's for locating so you could use this taper pin to kind of align this the castings together and then bolt them down so that means this one should come out with a little bit more rocking. Oh. Mm -hmm. Nope, that one's going to need to sit with oil. I'll break it if I put any more force. So I put this back together for now because even with some tapping from a brass hammer on the bottom, this fella still doesn't want to move. So it has some oil, it'll sit there, think about itself. While I flipped it to look on, on the underside, I realized that uh, there are two screws here and here on either side of the point where the um, set screw adjusting system would be. So not exactly sure why those are there if those would be maybe your elevation adjusting screws not sure just just an observation now i'll spin it around and uh we'll be able to look at the other bearing cap which has been exposed this is the side that has these copper plugs the other side has been left exposed if i can figure out how to move it There. 
All right, what does this have in store? We'll find out. Well, so this cap is captured by this arm system here. Not sure if I loosen this set screw all the way, maybe it'll release it. damage the brushes though although they are in pretty rough shape I can see this one's the whole top is kind of blown off no something else is holding that in place hmm Maybe I can get a screwdriver and adjust these arms out of the way. Mm, that's stuck. This side has a the dome head of screw instead of the square. So one or the other has been replaced. Now if I pull that back, there's so much grease in here that the brush just stays disconnected. So maybe that's a good thing for what I'm trying to do. Whoops. I'll put a little bit of oil down in. I don't want to do this too vigorously and risk destroying the little coiled wires under there, but um, I'm going to power it up. I'll have to inspect them anyway. don't want to make a little tinderbox out of those. Hmm. Well, I see a washer inside here. That might need to be uh, the area around it is very filled with dirt, so I might need to clean that and push the washer back. Let me experiment. All right, well, while a few parts here sit in oil, I'm gonna start to lightly clean. This is extremely fine steel wool. Lightly go over the top here. Um, I also noticed, kind of funny down here with the brush holders, these assemblies are isolated from this copper adjusting bar by a hardwood bushing right right here that goes through the center that supports this stud. It's the same on both sides. This one's in pretty rough shape. I'm not sure if it if there will be a risk of any uh, conductance there, but that'll, that'll all be inspected. And these brush retainers that you can kind of pull back are pushed by a spring that's here. So the brushes themselves seem to be pretty basic pieces of carbon. There's one. See, it's in very rough shape on the surface that's exposed, but uh, at least it shouldn't be hard to source replacements. Looks like about a quarter inch by mm, seven, what would that be, five eighths?
So I'll just take this dust off very gently. These panels on either side here as well are some sort of wood. This one's a little bit loose and then I'm not sure what this is, if it's ebonite or another type of wood on the inside. It's cracked on both sides here to act as an insulator, I assume. Exposing some interesting markings here. Looks like we have another serial number mark, 263, which is stamped all over the machine on the, the tag, on the bearing caps, on the base. Doesn't seem like these pieces of wood were ever painted either. They were left with this surface maybe oiled. If I look at the edge here, there's just a major buildup of grease. Grease and soot, I don't believe that is paint. So here are the markings on the top. You can see 263, that's the serial number of the machine. Double zero, which is, according to this plate, the type, the model. And then there's a strange little I right here, an I with a circle around it. Not sure what its story is. And I've realized that this top piece isn't wood. This is a big piece of metal, which makes more sense so that it would continue this, the loop. Whoops. So it must have either been painted or varnished at one point. Now here I just want to kind of highlight with a close-up the uh, how these rope wrappings kind of look. Um, I'm also going to take the same fine seal wool and start to clean the base. Look at that, look at how well that cleans up. It's coated in some pretty heavy-duty oil. I'm just going very gently. It looks like there's kind of a ring of maybe Babbitt material or this is where the uh, casting kind of uh, flashing type things were cut off risers or something so I'll give it a clean just about like this I don't intend to go much more thoroughly than this but I definitely want to get off any of the greenish corrosion um, back to this wrapping the rope seems like old style hemp rope it's about a mm, about an eight eighth inch diameter rope looking at some frayed spots on the far side here but it's coated in something I'm not sure if it's paint, which seems to be red. It, it's covered in a lot of filth, but on the cracked pieces, you can see a dark red, kind of almost burgundy, burgundy orange, maybe even. And that would make me think that this is a, like a Glyptol paint, that type of uh, insulating goop that motors are dipped in. So it could be that these rope pieces of rope were uh, coated with Glyptol at one time. Otherwise, it was just a laid-on thick type of uh, red paint, I believe, originally on these wrappings. Another small finish aspect for those who are really interested in how these were originally um, finished from the factory. It seems, when I take this carrying or lifting loop out, you can see there's some rusty portions, but you can also see this gray spot. This seems to be the original scale from when this loop would have been forged. But on top of that, on this other side, it's up to you to determine. I'm going to leave it like this. There's some pretty thick black scale, which seems to be harder than if it was grease. So that makes me think that this was painted black 
at one point. How far that black paint reached, I don't know. I don't see any traces of black paint on this big iron part here, the top of the inductor. Um, but, you know, who knows? These screws here are kind of funny. These uh, nuts, sorry. This brass one, this brass one. You can tell whoever was running the, the brass nut lathe was a bit more um, ambitious with this guy. Took the shoulder off more as opposed to this one. So it, it's kind of neat when you come across these things. It goes back to this era when everything was handmade and a little bit of variation wasn't uncommon to see. So these nuts are brass and these copper poles in the middle. The poles in the middle are copper. Copper, brass, iron. Okay, here's something interesting I'm going to point out. See those shiny black spots? It seems like here, 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 if I go to the other side, just a little bit left here. These seem to be the slight remains of black paint. So it seems possible, maybe even likely, that this whole bottom piece was painted black. I know that the bottom of this casting here was black. You can see that there it's not just grease and uh, so I guess they just painted the whole base black here's the unit after cleaning gentle cleaning everywhere I put a little bit of oil in both bearings and uh, everything turns very smoothly the brushes I've pushed inward so that they are contacting and I will hook, hook it up right now. This is a scientific power supply with um, good DC from 0 to 30 volts and 0 to 5 amps. We'll put those in. You can see both of these coils have contacts that come out the top. One goes right to this terminal and the other one zigzags across to this terminal and the same with this side. So you end up with kind of a shape like this on either side. And then these contacts are what go down to the brush holders. Brush holders are pretty funny. They're only insulated by a wood sleeve. This bushing is, is a hardwood sleeve and that's what the post goes through. So I'll just lock it about here all of the dynamos i've seen are set on this approximate angle and uh, we'll see what happens everything seems to check out for continuity um let's have a look ah look at that that's not drawing much at all Minor sparking happening on the brushes, but that's to be expected. This is amazing. The last time this probably ran was 1920s or 30s. Well... How's that for luck? Whoa. Holy. Two thumbs up for sure. <laughs>